Good evening, everyone. That was a little bit loud there. Thank you for bearing with us with some of these technical challenges here. The time is 6.12 p.m., and I hereby call this meeting of the Student Senate to order. And so we'll begin with a roll call. When I read your name, please say here or present. Martinez. Here. Gopa. Here. Azan. Here. Rolls. Here. Chenoweth. Here. Everhart. Here. Atikos. Here. Halas. Here. Minshu. Here. Janes. Here. Trotter. Here. Moisango. Here. Veriger. Here. Irving. Here. Jones. Cecil, Isma, Amro, Mamani, Larson, Pursley, and Schneider. We do have quorum for the evening. And so we'll now move into the Pledge of Allegiance led by Speaker Cecil. And so seeing no Senate program for this evening, we'll move now into open forum. Open forum shall serve as an opportunity for students to speak about any issues relevant to the student body. If you're here tonight for open forum, I would ask that you approach the podium on my left. Seeing none, we'll move into adopting this evening's agenda. Are there any amendments before we do so? Senator is on. Uh, so motion to remove 2023-3-003 SO from the agenda. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the suffix on that? Uh, 003 SO. And was there a second one you'd like to include in that same motion or two yes. different? Yes, so I have uh, two other um, bills and Speaker Cecil can give you the number. So To add to the agenda. Yeah, to add to the agenda. Let me see. 2023-3-005-SR and 2023-3-026-F. All right, so there's been a motion to remove item 003-SO, adding items 005-SR and 026-F. Is there a second on that motion? Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to making this amendment? Seeing none, it shall be made, and we're now back on the agenda as a whole. Are there any further amendments before we adopt this evening's agenda? Senator Jaynes. Uh, oh, my gosh. My speaker. Should I just, like, oh, wait. <laughs> uh, my speaker, uh, my speaker, Speaker Cecil will um, have the numbers, but I motion to add it um, to the agenda and put it to the top, to the bottom of external matters. That bill is 2023-3-027F, Founding Indian Students Association. All right, and so it's been moved to add item 027F to the bottom of external matters. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to making this amendment? Seeing none, it shall be made. Are there any further amendments before we adopt this, this evening's agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to do so? <laughs> Some combination has been moved and seconded to adopt this evening's agenda. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, it shall be adopted. And so we're now on the approval of our previous uh, meeting minutes. Is there a motion to adopt those? Is there a second on that? Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to approving the previous minutes? Seeing none, they shall be approved. And so with that, we'll move into committee reports, starting with Speaker Cecil and the Rules Committee. Uh, Rules Committee le met last night. We talked about the bylaws, um, went over what those are. Uh, we have a few changes, so they're tabled in committee for one more week. Um, just bills that weren't changed in the fall um, that were caught. And then we voted on a censure bill that'll be up later tonight. Um, the committee voted to have that brought before Senate, and it's on First Street this week. So with that, the floor is open for any questions for the Rules Committee. Seeing none, we'll move on to finance. Hi. Um, so, Martin had to take a quick phone call. 
um, pretty straightforward with our same financial bills. Um, we'll see them tonight, and then we have our last meeting, same time, same place next week. All right, and so with that, the floor is open for any questions for finance. Seeing none, we'll move on to the PR committee. Is there a representative tonight from PR? Hello everyone, PR met last night. It was a pretty quick meeting. We just kind of discussed what we wanted to do with the remainder of our budgets. Our biggest idea is possibly getting a lot of like t-shirts or polos that we can distribute throughout the entire student government that we can use for a lot of like outreach events. So that's something that we're looking into. And then also we need someone for the uh, Senate recap at the end of Senate, basically all you have to do is just take a couple quick notes and that will get posted on the Instagram. That counts towards your out, one of your outreach credits. So if you need that, just please uh, message me on Teams and then I'll just get you everything that you need. Also, a lot of you guys haven't completed all your outreach credits. If uh, you do not see your name in the MIS under the outreach tab and you believe that you have outreach credits that need to be counted for, please let me know. Otherwise, if you don't see your name at all and you haven't done your outreach credits, please still contact it, contact me and I can get you a couple things squared off and then we can go from there. So with that, the floor is open for questions. Seeing none, we'll move on to the IDEA committee. Is there a representative tonight from IDEA, Senator Mominy? Uh, hi, y'all. We just had a quick update about the IDEA Town Hall. The event off went through today, so we are super excited for that. Um, it is going to be on April 2nd from 6 to 8 um, in Carver, Carver Hall 101. We will be having food, um, water, as well as uh, sweaters with the new logo and the name of the Multicultural Town Hall Student Government of the Year, etc. So we're really excited for that to finally be coming up. Um, we also got posters made, so we plan on having those put up around to help um, people find their way to the event as well as making a post on social media. So I look forward to attending that and seeing some of you guys there. And with that, the floor is open for questions. Seeing none, we'll move on to, I believe, SI. This is a representative tonight from Student Initiatives. So I met with FPM today and we're finalizing routes for the safety walk. Um, he was a big help on all this. And then I meet with the chief of police tomorrow to discuss any last- We talked about a couple other things. And if you guys want to join the ICPD advisory board meetings, just send me an email. Senator Trotter. Yeah, I'm just uh, like to remind that the IRHA elections are coming up soon. So if you live in a residence hall, be sure to vote for that. That's it. Senator Rolls. Yesterday, the Design Council had its second public meeting in what, five years or so. Um, we had pretty much a full auditorium, so like over 25 people. And we just talked about just kind of how everything works in the College of Design, just educating students. We addressed a lot of concerns. For the past week and a half, we've had an anonymous, like, tips box. People just write their concerns and drop them in a box. And we're just addressing that with the faculty and just kind of getting a lot of stuff just figured out and just addressing student concerns. All right. And so with that, are there any further committee updates? Seeing none, we'll move into comments from the judicial branch. We have a representative. No comments tonight. Seeing none. Comments from our advisor. Seeing no advisor present tonight. Comments from the executive branch. Is this on? Okay, there we go. Hello, everybody. All right. Every week I say my comments are going to be short. This week they're actually going to be short. Two things. RSVP right now for inauguration if you have not. It is in the student government teams that it will be closing soon. It's already almost a week past the time we've needed RSVPs, but we're having it open because we're just now reaching out to the new people that are going to be joining student government this next year. So please RSVP literally right now. You can get on your laptops and do it right now while I'm talking. I'd really appreciate it. And then Tomorrow at 4 p.m., chief officers are going to be voting on awards for um, the Mission Awards and Cardinal Guild Awards for, that will be given out at inauguration. So if you haven't er, 
uh, uh, nominated someone and you would like to, please do that before 4 p.m. tomorrow. Um, those are also on the teams as well. So that's all I have tonight. So with that, are there any comments or questions for the executive branch? Seeing none, we'll move into the business of this evening, starting with external matter 2023-3-022F, funding for campus sidewalk and flagpole improvement projects with Senator Larson. Hello, um, if you have a laptop in front of you, um, before I start kind of going over the bill, um, the appendix does not work. Speaker Cecil is sending you an email right now, but don't click on that. Follow me while I'm reading the bill and then click on the appendix so you understand what I'm talking about. But for those of you that are new to Senate, um, I had brought this up last semester, just trying to see if it was an interest in it. And now it, here is the funding for flagpole. So I'm just gonna read the bill so there's not any like misinformation. So funding for campus sidewalk and flagpole improvements project. There is currently no cement leading to nor around the flagpole, allowing for limited accessibility the day to day for, for the day to day, especially during snowy or rainy conditions, recognizing that ROTC uses the flagpole for reveille and retreat, which is putting up and taking down the flag two times a day every week, except for weekends and holidays, as well as for ceremonial purposes, even during the rain and snow. Adding the cement walkway would allow for more effective and more professional ceremonial purposes, like being able to shovel snow off the sidewalk and not trying up the grass, as well as allowing for proper military movements or cement surfaces. The bench will not only provide adequate seating, not currently available in the areas um, and then I have to make an amendment for that last part. Um, and then the cement, in addition to the bench, would revitalize the central campus and accentuate the beauty of Iowa State campus. Um, that being said, um, for $4,855 be sent to this, from the special projects account to facilities project and management, FPM. And then if you look down um, in the bench and sidewalk, um, the bench, for one is going to be 1855 and then the sidewalk is going to be 3000 totaling to 4855 and then I see that Alex is trying or speaker Cecil is trying to add it in are you not just going to email it where do you what is happening okay um, so I'm just going to keep talking so the reason that I feel as though I'm qualified to talk about this if those People, if people don't know, so I was in, from the day I got to Iowa State, I joined Air Force ROTC, and I was involved in it up until the first day of my junior year, and this has been a problem for four years now, and um, I'm happy to try to try to finally get this in motion to make some change. Um, and I want to keep talking until you can get the appendix up, because it's very important to what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, proper uh, military movements... We can't do them on the grass because um, the ROTC doesn't want to be responsible for um, basically like destructing Iowa State property, and so that would be very helpful for those. And if everybody wants to refresh their page so that we can get that amend um, appendix up, so that I can talk about it with the remainder of my speaking privilege. Uh, is it working for you? <laughs> Too many people are clicking on it. Okay, I'll just pull up my original copy. Okay, so could everybody, like, is, is everybody looking at it so I can kind of explain what it is? So, yeah, okay. Is anybody having trouble accessing it before I start talking? Because I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so this was sent over from fil uh, Facilities Planning and Management. I had meetings with them one-on-one. -on -one. We also went to um, a flag raising in the morning um, with people from Facilities Planning and Management, and I kind of, kind of went over some of the facing movements, why this matters to uh, Air Force ROTC, and um, talked about some of the problems with it, as well as their funding, where it would be coming from, um, so I could just kind of, I'll just, I'll just read this. So this is an estimate for installation of a four foot wide by 40 foot 
We did that because that's what it takes for us to do proper facing movements as well as when we fold the flag during um, retreat at the end of the day, uh, we didn't want the didn't want to have to go off the sidewalk to be able to fold the flag. So we did, the, there, the measurements have a reason. We did measure those. Um, and so it'll be a concrete pad. And so if you scroll down to the second page, I know the map is sideways, but I wanted it to be super big for everybody to see. So you can see the arrow point, pointing north. Those big green bubbles are the trees. Um, and then the flagpole itself is labeled and the bench, the proposed bench and concrete sod that the bench will be sitting on um, is also labeled. And then you can see the red lined is what we're proposing to fund. So it's the red sidewalk and the bench is what this bill is about. I know the map might be kind of confusing, um, but I've been talking for a while. So now I'll just open it up for questions or anything. So with that, the floor is open, starting with Senator Gopa. Have you taken this bill to finance? Is that directed towards me? What? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, Martin helped me write this. And I know that he wasn't here to give comments on it, but I, so I don't know if it was sent uh, with any, any bias or anything. But yes, we worked on this together. He looked over the numbers with me. He helped me write this. Um, but I was not at finance to give any of my. Uh, so I don't, I don't, is Martin back? Yeah, he is. Martin, if you want to. Can we table this bill? Is that okay? We, we ran out of time in finance committee. We had a two hour meeting and we still were not able to get to this. Is it possible if we can just table this here? Are you asking me? So Senator Gopa, it is still your speaking privilege if you wish to add anything else or motion. I like the intentions of this bill. It's pretty good. I, I would like it to, I like the bill to be run through finance because yeah, it makes sense uh, to run it through finance. And yeah, that's, a, uh, would you also be considering striking down the bench because it doesn't have the inscription saying funded by student government because we usually do that for all our projects. And I don't think we should fund a bench if they don't write down funded by student government. Are you, are you asking me that? Can I yeah, respond? Can you? Okay, um, so the reason that we're doing the bench is you have to have four people in order to do a flag detail, but it's students doing it. Sometimes we get preoccupied. Sometimes we miss our flag detail. It's at 8 a.m. in the morning and 5 p.m. at night. And at some point, like we have to take the flag down. So at some points, there's only details of two people and when that happens, to be able to efficiently fold the American flag and the state of Iowa flag, we have to set the flag on the rock that's by the flagpole uh, because we can't set any of the flags on the ground or else we would have to do like an official like military, like a, a burning of the flag. And so this would kind of alleviate some of that pressure. And there's also people that come and watch our ceremonies um, when we do official revelry and retreat in front of our entire detachment. And some of those people are old. Um, there, there's no seating right by the flagpole. So uh, even even though we won't Point get of information. So the question is about uh, if we are removing the word funded by our state student, you know, government, is it like, you know, worth enough putting it there? That's the question. Can we, can we engrave our state student government funded by on the bench or not? No. So I discussed that with facilities planning and management. And no benches that are currently being installed on campus are allowed to have any plaque on them. So maybe if you're looking at benches that were installed, you know, 20 or more years ago, they might have a plaque on them. But recently they are allowing any benches or anything on campus uh, except for online. So if you go online, like on the campus map, it'll show that that was funded by us, but they are not allowed to do it, um, which I was unaware of when I, like something that we had talked about, but I hadn't gotten the confirmation on. So that's why I put it in here. And that's why I need to make an amendment um, to strike it out. Cause I don't think this really affects the project. We're still doing it. It's still, there's still a reason there. And I don't feel like we really need credit. Uh, we could just have that in our, in our hearts and souls that we, we did this project and that's good enough. Yeah, fair enough. We can talk about this next week. I motion to table this legislation till next week until the rules look, uh, finance looks at it. 
Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to tabling this bill for one week until finance has had the opportunity to review it? There's been an objection, and so you can withdraw, or we'll go into discussion on the objection. All right, and so with that, the floor is open. We're discussing tabling this bill for one week, starting with Senator Larson. Sorry, before we table it, I just wanted to know why you, I know you said you had a two-hour meeting, um, but there's nothing uh, before my bill on the agenda, so I just wanted to know, like, what happened since this is the first bill that it wasn't, be, wasn't able to be discussed appropriately enough for us to talk about it this week. Yeah, so one, we had a lot of discussion about one of the bills we're going to see with the, the Indian Student Association. That, that was a majority of our time. Another one, there was a $19,000 bill for Green Initiatives Fund that we had a lot of conversation about specifically with, is it the role of student government to pay for gifts and items that are going to non-Iowa State students? So that, that was a big part of our discussion. We saw a couple of line item transfers. So that's, that's really what happened. I'm sorry, Rebecca. You know, there's still another week left and we can make sure that this gets passed and go through finance committee. Okay, um, just cause I, I'm not like calling you out. I just like for finance committee, um, do you not do the bills in order? Like, is it just like what's more important or is it usually like who's there to represent a club that goes first? Yeah, we're gonna give priority to, to, st to student organizations that came in that have a representative there to talk about it. Does that make sense? Cause we yeah. wanna be respectful of their time too. Understandable, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say why I might not support this or why I don't know if I want to table this is because me and Speaker Cecil and Gopa all have a presentation to give next week. And if this is also going to be the first thing on the agenda next week, I don't know if we're going to be here. Yes, you can move it down. Um, but that just might be a concern of mine wanting to table it to next week since I'm really the only person that worked on this bill. Um, although I'm talking about it today, I, I'm just afraid that I might not be here for adequate time next week. So with that, is there any further discussion on the motion to table? Senator Zahn? Uh, Senator Larson, my suggestion would be to talk to anyone else as well, and they can sponsor the bill. And you know, and I can sponsor it for you if you want to, and present into the next bill uh, week, if that's something that you are open for. Uh, but yeah, if that are you. So with that, is there any further discussion? Senator Gopa? Uh, Finance Director Hirsch, would you get two more of your outrages down here to do, hold a, an emergency finance meeting and try to get this bill looked at, I guess? Requires 24 hours? Uh, fair enough. Senator Persley. If you helped write this bill, why, why can't we look at it now? If Finance Director Hirsch helped write it, wouldn't it mean? Is that directed at someone specific? No one specific. I, that was just a comment. Point of clarification. Do the Senate has the right to bypass the finance and vote for it? That would be a great question for F.D. Hirsch. I'm not familiar with the, the regulations there as closely. Did you hear that question? Senator Zahn? Uh, the question is, do the Senate has the power to bypass the Finance Committee and vote for it? I would direct my questions to Speaker Cecil for that. Um, no bill technically has to go to any committee, uh, but if the body feels that it should go to a committee, it should. Uh, but in all technicality, we never have to bring stuff to committees. I, I motion to bypass uh, this bill from finance and vote on, on, on the behalf of Senate. Point of information, yeah. we don't need a motion to do that. Okay. We would just not table the bill. Okay. <laughs> yes? A motion to table a bill is not debatable, so this whole debate phase we don't need. Well, look at that. All right. <laughs> yes. If the Senate body decides, I'm not saying which way I would lean, could we untable it if we decide 
as a way to like buy like bring it back if senators do choose. You could, yes. Right. Yes. And so I do apologize on my error with that debate there for a moment. Uh, so it does look like we'll go into a vote on this. So voting yes means Okay. Voting yes means we table the bill. Voting no means we consider it tonight, or of course you may abstain. And so unless there's a strong feeling for a roll call vote, I'll do this as a placard vote. All those in favor of tabling the bill, please raise your placard at this time. Those opposed? And those abstaining? Thank you. And so with a vote of 0 to 15 to 6, the motion to table fails, and we're now back on the motion as a whole. Senator Larson. Moved and seconded to make that amendment as reflected in the fourth whereas clause. Are there any objections to this amendment? Seeing none, it shall be made. And so we're now back on the motion as a whole. Senator Persley. Um, I was just wondering if you considered different benches besides just a cement bench that had different cost options. Very good question. Uh, sorry, I did not address this. So. Um, facilities planning and management um, only allows certain benches in certain part of parts of campus. So this is the bench that is within the constraints of like all of central campus. So they all have to be identical. So it's not like why is there this this like metal bench in the middle of nowhere and there's no other like it on campus. So that's just part of the what has to be basically. There was no negotiation, um, and that's kind of what it is with the plaque. Is that like they would only allow it if it was the way that their paperwork said, if that makes sense. Senator James. Um, I guess my first question is, I'm noticing that at least in the area, it does go into an area where there are trees. Um, it looks far enough, but uh, does it have any threat to like the trees? Do we have to cut any trees down um, in that area to install the bench and or sidewalk? Uh, so if you look at the map, um, the flagpole is already there, and um, it. when I originally wrote this bill, for those of you that weren't there last semester, I put a, a whereas where I wanted to have the trees regularly trimmed. So FPNM took it upon themselves to do stages of my bill without having to need to get it approved by, by the Senate again. So they're making revisions to the flagpole as well as taking initiatives on the trees, and they actually ended up cutting some of the trees down and doing some of their own work. Um, so basically the answer is no, none of this will be in the way. The bench will be under a tree so that it will be shaded so it won't be in the sun if people would like to sit and observe. Um, but no, this will in no way affect what is already there. All right, got it. Um, and then I understand that they did parts of it and it would be too retroactive. Is there any in inclination to replant the trees that were cut down for this? Just because I know the um, quad was a place set for nature in a way. Yes. So for those that you that for those that don't know, um, that is a memorial grove for one of the past presidents of Iowa State. Um, and the reason that the trees were cut down is that they were either infected or were rotting. They had a problem. It wasn't just for this project. It was that there was something already wrong, and or that they were the trees were damaging, and they were also damaging the flag. Um, and if something is just outright damaging the American flag um, over and over again where we have to keep replacing it, which is the problem that I had with this bill in the first place was wanting to get it was because of the American flag. That's why that was taken care of. So it wasn't because of my project. It wasn't because of the sidewalk or the bench. There was other things that the trees were cut down. It has nothing to do with the sidewalk and the bench. And then my last question is, uh, did you investigate any alternative ways to have uh, something that marks that this was funded by ICU? Student government, uh, I know it can't be on the bench, but is there something on the sidewalk or like on the stone that was so uh, well used earlier? 
Yes, so unfortunately FPNM will not allow us to have any sort of plaque anywhere on what we are doing that will say that it was funded by us. Um, I can maybe pull up the email, but I think, I, I vaguely remember that there wasn't a reason. It's just like, that's how it is. Like we don't allow any plaques on campus anymore. Um, so there is no way that we could have funded by student government um, on what, what we're doing. All right, thank you. Thank you. Senator Azan. Uh, did you talk to FPM about uh, supporting a little bit amount or you just like volunteer to uh, support the full amount? I'm assuming this is the total cost, right? This is the total cost, yes. Um, they had talked that they might not be able to do the funding, but they did what they could with the flagpole and the trees on their own. And then so this is the part that they said that they wouldn't be able to do, so it's more of if we wanted to try to get funding from an outside source, we would not be able to do it by the end of the semester during my term. So this was the most effective, uh, straightforward path to get this project completed. I yield. Thank you. Senator Minshew. Um, so this is a bench, right? Have you... Um, considered like all over campus there's like sitting stones pretty much where they're like kind of the size of a boulder but like they're flat on top and then especially central campus there's those all over the place have you thought about that rather than a bench I'm not gonna lie I don't really know what just like a just like a big boulder yeah like when I'm walking on a path on Central campus or by the library, there's all there's stones over the all over the place. Have you looked into those or anything like that? Oh, like just like like cement blocks. Is that what you are meaning? Pretty much, yeah. I just looked up the name. They're called sitting stones, but they kind of just like look like boulders or whatever. Okay, so like you're talking about like the, the stone ledges that are like outside of the library for people to sit on. Is that what you're kind of meaning? They kind of look like a wall. Something like that. Okay, yes, so there is a big old stone uh, by the flagpole, uh, and it's not really used because um, it's kind of misshapen, and I think that they wouldn't be open to doing that because it would alter the beautification aspect of the flagpole area where this bench isn't, like, is compatible with the other benches on central campus. So doing a project like that would take a lot more time because it would be adding something new where this bench, it's already in that area, if that kind of makes sense. So this was, the only seating option was really only this. It's either the bench or nothing, basically. All right, so it was like the compatibility with the surrounding things. Yes. All right. Speaker Cecil. Um, so just to add to that last part, uh, a bench like this is a much lighter thing than a large rock. So the installation of a large rock, while it will be a lot, would be like prettier, uh, would cost a lot more for sure. So. so with that, are there any further comments on this bill? Moved and seconded to end debate at this time. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, closing comments, Senator Larson. Um, I would encourage you all to vote yes on this. This is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and I'm excited to see the results happens. All right, and so seeing as this is a finance bill, we'll move into a roll call vote. Once again, when I call your name, please say yes, no, or you may abstain. Martinez. Gopa. Azan. Rolls. Genoweth. Everhart. Atikos. Halas, Minshew, Janes, Trotter, Moisongo, Veriger, Irving, Jones, Cecil, Mamani, Larson, Persley, and Schneider. So with a vote of 21 to 0, oh, you caught me just in time. I apologize, Senator Isma. Here, 
yes, give me one moment. I, I want to make sure I have you on, on the roll. Yes, unfortunately, we didn't notice you come in. I'm sorry, we forgot to add you to the roll, and I apologize for that. If someone would like to make a motion in just a moment after we announce the vote, uh, unfortunately, it's too late to add that at this point, so I, I apologize for that. Uh, but with a vote of 20 to 0 to 1, the motion carries. So, yeah, we're going to clap for that, right? It's been moved to add Senator Amro to the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be sat. And so with that, we'll move on to our next item of business, item 2023-3-027F, funding the Indian Students Association with Senator Jaynes. Uh, while they come up, um, motion to waive first read on the bill. There's been a motion to waive first read on this item. Are there any, moved and seconded, are there any objections to doing so? Seeing no objections, first read shall be waived, and we're now back on the item as a whole on second read. Yeah, so um, they went through finance committee, and we gave them, we uh, sent it favorably, and they'll explain everything else. So you guys can talk, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm the treasurer of the uh, Indian Students Association. Uh, just like every year, we are planning uh, a vibrant event called Holi, which is uh, basically uh, people uh, celebrate the uh, arrival of spring by, you know, uh, music, dance, and just throwing colors uh, on each other, which is the main eminent part of uh, the event. And we uh, are also planning a few more events for this semester, uh, like movie night, uh, which is uh, which is basically uh, playing up an Indian movie uh, in the theaters we good. And uh, we have events like Bollywood night, which is uh, something like, you know, cosplay and dance uh, on the theme based on India. Um, and again, uh, we are not uh, limiting this event to Indians. We are uh, basically diversifying this event to everybody. And we did request uh, a bill, uh, the budget for these events. And um, we did have a finance meeting yesterday. Uh, according to that, uh, we uh, the, the finance uh, committee was uh, okay, uh, funding us with the, uh, just give me a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah, so uh, they're okay to fund us with the uh, the uh, tents, the grass cars, uh, the DJ, uh, which we need for the whole semester, because the all, uh, all the events we're planning, we need the DJ. And uh, apparently, uh, they're only able to fund us uh, just once uh, for the, International ethnic food, uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, yep. All right, and so with that, the floor is open for any questions. We'll start with Senator Azan. Uh, I had some uh, questions directed to uh, Finance Director Martin. So DJ Holly, and which is like around $300, and DJ Desi Night, which is around six hundred dollar. Uh, I'm just concerned about these line items. Where where are you getting these numbers? And because these are not the sponsor organization, right? So as per the PNC, I'm just uh, curious uh, if you can talk about these because we have two different line items, but having the same you know uh, responsibility, which is um, music. Uh, the other question uh, about the food. As per the PNC, we have food eligibility criteria only once. So did the ISA uh, get the food earlier during annual allocation or not? The third question I have uh, is the distribution of pliers, which is like $160. Um, it's what do you mean by distribution? Is it the printing? Because I can see the printing is like a separate line item. What do you mean by distribution and costing $160? If you can talk about these, that would be great. Yeah, that was that was a lot of questions there all at once. So this document 
or the bill follows our priority and criteria document, we're allowed to pay for a DJ. And so it's, it's two separate. So that's why we didn't combine them. We're not just going to say like, we're going to pay for arts and craft supplies just overall. That'd be more of just, we want to do every like specific line item. The more specific it gets, the better we are with student funds and making sure that that money is, is appropriately being spent. So that that's question one. Number two, can you, can you remind me what your second question was? Uh, the second question about the food, did they already use this in annual no. allocation or not? No, they have not. Okay. This is this is a new team, and they're they're super dedicated to growing Indian Student Association, however best they can. Mm -hmm. So no, we have not we have not given them money for an ethnic food event, ethnic or international food event for this year. The third question is the distribution of flyer, which is one sixty dollar. What do you mean by distribution? I I believe I'm under the impression that it's flyers that are distributed is it by student engagement is that correct and they go and put them to the bulletin boards yeah okay. so that's what it is we're basically just paying for that and for a point of information on the dj it's the one event right so two different line items for one dj oh okay awesome does okay. that make sense? So we're not yeah. just going to give them money for DJ and they yeah. can just use that money for a DJ throughout the year whenever they feel like it. They're going to have to use that money um, for very specific line items. We ensure that it's specific to so make sure that student money is best being adequately spent. Does that make sense? Awesome. I you? So if that... Sorry? Been a motion to remove Senator Trotter. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be removed. Moved and seconded to end debate at this time. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing no objections, closing comments, Senator James? Seeing no closing comments and seeing as this bill is now on second read, we'll move into a roll call vote. So once again, when I read your name, please say yes, no, or abstain. Martinez? Yes. Gopa? Yes. Azan? Yes. Rolls? Yes. Chenoweth? Yes. Everhart? Ticos. Yes. Halas. Yes. Minchu. Yes. Janes. Yes. Moisango. Yes. Veriger. Yes. Irving. Yes. Jones. Yes. Fortunately, we forgot to remove Speaker Cecil. Isma. Yes. Mamani. Larson? Yes. Pursley? Yes. And Schneider? Yes. Give me one moment there. Um, can I yes. <coughs> Excuse me on that. I apologize. Senator Amro. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. And so with a vote of 17 to 0 to 2 to 2, the motion carries. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thank you. And so with that, seeing no internal matters, we'll move into special, special orders, general orders, starting with 2023-3-002-SA, Articles of Cooperation with Speaker Cecil. Uh, so these were introduced last week, um, and they're the articles that we agree upon with GPSS. Uh, the GPSS vice president is here to discuss them. I hope you all did your homework, looked over them. I um, hope you have questions for the people involved in negotiating it. So. With that, I'll have the Vice President go to the podium. It's been a little bit since I've stood up in front of Senate. Uh, I see some new faces, so just for everyone, um, my name is Eddie Mahoney. I was a graduate senator for a good chunk of this year. I was the Speaker of the Senate last year, and I'm currently serving as the Vice President of the Graduate Student Body. 
Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Articles of Cooperation is the governing document that dictates the relationship between the Graduate and Professional Student Senate and student government. Uh, we're pretty unique as a university in that we have a student government that represents all students and then also a graduate senate that specifically focuses on graduate student issues. Um, the thing is, graduate or the GPSS is a lot more than just a sort of normal constituency council. Uh, it was formed in 1970 and some form of these articles has existed since it was founded. So it's been about 50 years of kind of this continued shared governance over the university. Um, many of the same meetings that um, President Holliday and Vice President Margaret would be in, myself and uh, President Christine from GPSS would be in. So there is sort of a, uh, um, a long-standing tradition of a higher level of collaboration than just a normal constituency council. So as it stands, uh, there's two different operating copies of the Articles of Cooperation. This is something I realized sort of at the beginning of this year. Um, GPSS and student government have two different um, articles. I'm not really sure where they got lost, um, but that necessitates adopting a new copy that just blanket replaces the old one so that everybody's on the same page. Um, as it stands, um, there was a lot of opportunity as I sat on both committees in the, over the last two, or both bodies over the last two years that I recognized for your collaborative efforts increase. Um, so the major changes, just kind of like block by block, um, 1.1 1 .1 basically talks about the president vice president meeting to discuss changes to the articles and the relationship between StuGov and GPSS every year. And then it prescribes a number of complementary positions within the two organizations um, that should be in contact with each other. What that contact might look like and what that communication might look like is dependent on the two uh, individuals or the people involved, as well as um, a lot of lines you see in throughout 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, um, given the opportunity. Uh, basically, that's a suggestive thing that doesn't prescribe these meetings have to happen, but just uh, basically more or less says, hey, this should be a conversation that it might be a beneficial uh, thing for these two bodies to meet. Um, 1.3 is essentially the same thing that currently exists, um, and it just governs how uh, student government senators that are elected into their positions operate within GPSS and vice versa. Um, 1 point, or 2.1 is more or less the same as what we have now. Uh, it just dictates how the student activity fee is dispersed between GPSS and student government. It pulls up a clause that currently exists within the bylaws of student government, mandating that the president, vice president, and finance director of student government, and the president, vice president, and treasurer of GPSS meet to discuss the student activity fee request. Um, student government is for administrative uh, Efficiency sake is the one that actually asks for the student activity fee, but GPSS does receive a portion of that student activity fee um, as per the Guard of Cooperation. Um, there is also a line because of some communication issues over the year and some misunderstandings about the makeup of the student fee committee. While we do not as a body uh, between GPSS and student government directly control that makeup, having a joint understanding, one, clears up any miscommunications that may happen in the future, and also two, gives us a better bargaining uh, chip if we do want to change the makeup of the student fee committee to increase the number of non-voting seats or perhaps change um, what the voting seats do look like uh, between the two bodies. So having this in writing gives us a better place to go to the administration to say, hey, we want to change this if we choose to do so in the future. Um, Article 3 has a couple changes. Um, basically, it allows uh, the appointments from each other's to committees. So as it currently is written, the finance director of student government sits on the GPSS Finance Committee and the Treasurer of GPSS Finance Committee. The Treasurer of GPSS sits on the Stuga Finance Committee, as well as the GPSS legislative person actually sitting on student initiatives um, because titles didn't get updated. So basically, this just um, increases some collaborative efforts, putting a couple members of GPSS on some StuGov committees and putting some people on StuGov committees on GPSS committees, but also provides a mechanism for the bodies to recall or to kick someone out. So say, um, the finance director on GPS or finance director sent to GPSS doesn't work out in GPSS. GPSS could get rid of him. That being said, if the bodies are kicking major members out, I think there's a bigger problem. Um, finally, the main large change is a cancellation clause under Article Six. That's a whole new article written. Um, in some conversations with chief officers, um, this whole these whole articles have been gone through my exec team, chief officers, rules committee. It's been a large collaborative effort, um, even though I've been kind of the principal author. Um, article 6 provides a mechanism for cancellation. So currently the articles exist permanently until amended by both bodies. This provides a way for a body to unilaterally pull out of a portion of the articles. Um, it's Article 1.3 and the specific funding articles that dictate how the funding is dispersed have to remain into effect. Um, otherwise, it just would get really messy really quickly. Um, but this provides a <coughs> high barrier of entry. It's the same um, 
terms that dictate how GPA or student government contracts require cancellation. Um, but it provides a way for a body to pull out of the agreement if communication is breaking down, if the committee uh, appointments aren't working, um, anything like that. So basically it's just meant to be a document that streamlines communication, provides better collaboration between our two bodies and finally makes sure we're all on the same page because like I said, student government and GPSS have two different articles and I don't know how that happened in the last 10 years. All right, and so if that, as we open the floor, I would entertain a motion to add Senator Trotter back to the roll. Yes. Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be added, and we'll start the conversation with Speaker Cecil. So <coughs> on first read with the cancellation clause, I was not super on board with it. Um, and then just now it kind of like clicked with me. Um, because we have to have those like specific things like funding and all of those agreements. It's not that we can't have them. It's that we have to ensure there's a replacement if we want out of the contract. Um, so it doesn't change how it is now because if we were to like cancel the contract, those would go away and then we'd lose funding for student support. Um, the only addition is that we can get out of part of the contract. Um, and I was going to say something against that, but that actually feels like a good thing because then we ensure that students always have support on the funding side and we have to always have some form of funding agreement to share student fees. So. Can I say one thing then? Add something? Do you, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I'll add yield something. to you. Okay. And yeah, he's right. There's one thing I want to throw out. If there isn't some form of articles of cooperation, it is my understanding that from the controller's office point of view, 100% um, of the student activity fee paid by graduate professional students would go straight to student, uh, GPSS. So that's part of why something like this needs to exist, so that student government is getting their portion of the graduate and professional student, uh, student activity fee. It's a very complicated thing behind the scenes, but that is at least my understanding. So these articles make sure that student government's at least getting some money from the graduate and professional students that they do represent. Senator Gopa. Uh, yeah, uh, so I have a question for Mahoney. So what if, so you, GPSS is essentially a constituency council, right? Uh, I, in some ways, yes, but we are far more than that, I would argue. But down, like down to the basis, it's a constituency. You guys are a constituency council, right? Of student government. No, we are, I, once again, we are an independent body, completely rep irrespective of student government. We in some capacity and part of it function as a constituency council for student government. Okay, so the same thing with IRHA, you would agree? More, no. IRHA is specifically focused on residence hall students and that is specific to students living in the residence halls, while GPSS is focused on graduate and professional student senates, that also includes vet med students. And students within the graduate and professional student senate are in every single college across the entire university and in every single uh, residency area con across the entire university. So issues that we deal with are far more cross-cutting than just a normal constituency council, which is why we are invited into the same meetings at the Board of Regents and with the, uh, the major, administration, ma major administrative leaders of the university. Uh, so I wanna talk about 3.3.2 and 3.3.3, 3.3.4, 3.3.5. .3 I think student government should also have the chance to like approve of the GPSS officer to the other committees because what if we don't like, let's say for the GPSS Senate engagement officer and our student government legislator ambassadors. So, so student government legislator ambassadors, we have a certain amount of points that we wanna go to, to the capital about, but let's say GPSS Senate has other points they wanna talk about. So we cannot collaborate effectively if, if you, if, both body, diff, of both governing bodies have different points to talk about because GPSS might want more of this while student government does not want to talk about that. So I, I think student government should have the option to like vote on whether we want, this, want these officers on our boards or not. Is that? No, this is just to Senate and I would motion an, to amend this by saying based on voting for a student government. Uh, I don't know, how, do, how would we phrase that? Season. Point of information, this is much like a contract. We would have to table it and go back into discussion with GPSS to change this document. 
Yeah, I would entertain something like that because we might not always agree on the same things. Yep, Eddie, you can tell. Um, if I may respond to that. The thing is, um, so currently, uh, this sort of cross-representation on each other's committees exists in some form. Uh, the only reason I'm expanding it is because while, um, say, the GPSS Wellness Chair being on the Health and Wellness Committee, 90% of what the GPSS Wellness Chair is working on is also uh, applicable to all students, not just graduate students, because we represent students across every college through the necessity of the graduate college. Um, the other thing is if the Senate engagement officer wasn't being good under 3.3.1, which was added in conversations with the chief officers, Senate could remove them up on their own. Um, and finally, if, say, in your specific example, if GPSS was pushing for something slightly different legislatively, we go to the Capitol on our own anyways, um, and our Senate engagement officer, which is our legislative affairs person, already works with the legislative affairs director in student government, um, and I would say it's personally a failing of student government if they aren't taking into consideration the legislative needs of student graduate students because they do represent graduate students in that regard. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Senator Martinez. So uh, just to clarify, does uh, does uh, does GPSS get any portion or percentage of the fees specifically for undergrad students? No. Okay. Just graduate and professional students. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Senator Jaynes. Uh, so my first thing is building off of that. I know you said it, but to confirm it for Senate, um, if this doesn't pass, all funding of graduate students, um, student fees would only go to GPSS. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it was just completely, it was just this year that I realized we have two different operation or two different um, copies currently under consideration. They both do have at least that same number, that two thirds of graduate and professional student funding go to uh, GPSS and one third goes to student government. Um, that's where I'm not sure about the legality of the entire agreement when GPSS and StuGov have two different copies ratified from different dates. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm, from my understanding, it, that is how the uh, controller's office would start to treat it if the Articles of Cooperation completely disappeared. Okay, thank you. My, uh, yeah? Yeah, I, underst I understand. I was just... No, I, I, I understood that we already were getting it. I was just wondering if it was, if the relationship of the money was like, it comes to us and then we're giving them the two thirds or it goes to them and they're giving us the one third. Um, it actually gets split at the controller's office okay. before it gets to either of our accounts. Oh, okay, sorry. I just wanted a clarification on how that money moves. Yeah, it's, um, it's above student government and GPSS. Absolutely. Happens. I just, I wanted that clarification. Then because it's above us, um, I was just wondering, obviously, just on a GPSS side or on our side, is there any way for us to enter agreements if something happens where we decide, um, like, we wanted to change that ratio, or is that something that, like, like, could that is that something that we can put in this bill? Because I feel like that is appropriate to maybe have those discussions, or is that because it's so high up we can't do that? So that the the split comes from these articles, um, and that's where Article Five, allowing them to be amended, comes right. from. Okay. Um, and then also Article uh, 1. 1. Point, uh, 1. 1. 1. 1, mm -hmm. um, that that the president uh, presidents of both organizations will meet to discuss the state of the relationship between GPSS and the Articles of Cooperation in whole and provide mm -hmm. a report to Senate. Um, that kind of ensures that that ongoing dialogue is happening about is the split equitable, is the relationship good, um, sort of in general. Got it. Um, and then my last question is, I apologize that I can't remember the number. Um, the one where it says that it is on GPSS to um, um, like be able to nominate an individual up into the graduate college, is GPSS the only constituency? Is that like uh, the only constituency? Is it on, are you talking about 3.3.1 or 3.1.1 um, or? Oh, 1.3.3.A. Um, that's just how current election law works. Right. So that is when they are serving in that capacity as a constituency council. Right. Got it. That's just current how it works. 
Uh, and then are those members also like senators on GPSS? Yeah, they are voting members, senators at large within um, GPSS. All right, thank you. I yield. Vice Speaker Everhart. Have you presented these articles to the G um, Graduate Senate yet, or were you waiting to like get them ratified here first? Uh, the only reason they didn't get up voted on on my in my Senate meeting on Monday is because I didn't get them. They didn't go through your guys or through Student Governments Rules Committee in time. I wanted okay. rules committees, chief officers, executive committees, everybody to look over them while the language could still be changed. Okay, perfect. Because once it hits the Senate floor, obviously, it's kind of locked in. Yeah, I just was wondering about that because I didn't know if we were going to be ratifying that first or you guys were. Yeah, so. you guys are first, but that's just the, more of a timeline the time, thing than yes. anything. Okay, thank you. So with that, oh, excuse me, Senator Trotter. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to check with what Gope had initially mentioned earlier of he, he was uh, under the impression that you were something of a constituency council. I get the, the understanding that's not correct. Uh, would you be considered something more close to like a sister republic or something of that nature of we're more on the same level as each other? Um, the way I kind of always described it is if student government is like tier one and constituency councils are like tier two, GPSS is like 1.5 to one, somewhere in there. Um, in some ways, yeah, we are a constituency council where we send people to, or we're in charge of the graduate um, constituency and the vet med constituency for student government. Um, but because the population we represent as graduate students is broad across the entire university and such an integral part of a lot of the, um, I mean, most classes you take where your TA is a teacher, or most classes where you have a TA, that's gonna be a graduate student for example. Um, so because it's such an integral part of the mechanisms of the university, we end up in a lot of the same sort of meetings, which is why I say we're a lot more um, than a graduate, or more than a normal constituency council. We also have a lot more funding. Thank you, I yield. Senator James. Um, I just wanted to see if you can point to specific language under the cancellation article, uh, just to ensure that that funding stays the same, because I was trying to read through it just because you said it did, but I couldn't find where. I don't know if I missed that. 6.1.1. Uh, um, until cancellation, clause 1.3 and its subsidiary clauses, clause 2.1 and 2.2, and then article 4, 5, and 6 will still be in effect. So if, uh, if the articles are canceled, those ones are still into effect, and it basically goes to um, a rump agreement. Got it. And then my only other question is, when you present this to... Um, GPSS Senate, uh, will we have a representative of student government there just to answer any questions from the student government? Senate? I know you are well versed, but. Yeah, I, I, I guess I hadn't considered it, but I absolutely could ensure somebody, somebody uh, from the chief officers, I imagine would probably be the best case. Yeah, absolutely. Could be there. I, I would think more on the chief officer, but I, I would personally request that. I don't know if the rest of the Senate, because yeah, I just think absolutely. it's fair just to have someone. I understand oh, you yeah. have a lot of insight on us. Yeah. But. Yeah, um, and thank you, I yield. So with that, the floor is open for any further comments on this item. Moved and seconded to end debate at this time. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing no objections, closing comments, Speaker Cecil. Seeing no closing comments, we'll move into a vote on this item. UC has been called for. Are there any objections to passing this motion by way of unanimous consent? Seeing no objection, the motion carries. So with that, we'll move into item 2023-3-007Y, criteria for Senate programs with Speaker Cecil. <clears throat> so as many of you all remember, um, towards the start of me being Speaker, we had an app come in. And with that, there was a lot of question on how we could do that or if we could, um, and in the bylaws, it's really just up to the speaker's discretion. Uh, telling some thoughts that rules had on how we could make it more, like have a criteria that we wanna see out of our programs. Um, that would mean more people could be able to come to a program, but it would also give guidelines on how a program needs to function. So we would be able to have more of a consensus and. It honestly would take some power from the speaker, but it would be a way to have potentially more programs, but definitely more options and more informed 
um, decision making by having more detailed stuff come through. So, so with that the floor is open. Starting with Senator <coughs> Azan. Uh, I'm still confused, uh, Speaker Cecil. If you can talk about it. Uh, so you are you are trying to do this that the Senate will decide uh, if we're going to have the program because again the power who's going to make the decision whether we're going to have the Senate program or not because it seems like based on the clause that we have right now on the bill it's going to be the speaker again so I'm concerned about yes. the consensus. So this where gives the, cons the speaker guidelines. To oh, make okay. The decision. So it's a guideline for the speaker. Yeah, awesome. those don't exist currently. So mm -hmm. when you yeah, put yeah, that yeah. up to me, I kind of had to figure those out on my own. Awesome. Um, talking to rules is where we found these, uh, but it it would have been really nice to have those at that point because it was just a lot of conversations that this alleviates. So. Awesome. I yield. Senator Martinez. Motion to remove Senator James from the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, she shall be removed. Okay, so uh, my question, so if, as the language currently is, if a topic for the program is not about a topic or bill that is being discussed at the meeting, then that program cannot be presented to Senate? Um, that's not how I read it, but I would definitely be open to amendments on that. Um, but the thought is more it needs to be like somehow add value to a Senate meeting, whether that is informing us more on a bill that will be later in the meeting or just generally like we have a lot that informs us on what's happening in the university um, and kind of pursuing that like it needs to be something that is adding value to this and not just <coughs> something someone that is talking about like something that is their special interest but it's not going to help us necessarily. Uh, but I'd definitely be open to suggested rewording on that. So yeah, I think uh, saying something like be informative or educational uh, towards the interests of students at Iowa State, uh, something a little bit more concise. Because uh, I see you, you probably didn't mean it to sound that way, but I, I guess I saw it as a topic that could only be, or if it's not about what we're talking about during the Senate meeting, then they cannot speak. But I'm glad you clarified that. Or could you just take that as a friendly? So are you, are you making an official motion on that? I don't know. You see man typing away. <laughs> I'm typing in a suggestion. It's not an official, but that would have to be an amendment. A friendly is like grammar. Oh, okay, or okay. Uh, well, I motion to amend the document to say what you're typing at the moment. Second. Moved and seconded for this amendment. Are there any objections? Is that I, amendment? I'm done typing. <laughs> this is what it would say. So I'll give you an opportunity to withdraw your objection or we'll. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Are there any objections to making the amendment that is now fully re reflected on screen? Seeing no objections, the amendment shall be made. So we're back on the motion as a whole. Senator Persley. Yeah, so what would happen if a program went longer than 30 minutes and are the people who are presenting the programs going to be informed of that? Uh, so it's not explicitly stated, but I assume if we would like to give them more time, we'd be able to extend that the same way we can extend debate. Um, and more of the intent is we don't want like every presentation to be an hour long and take a full hour. Um, and in my view, the program's a little bit separate than like a questioning period afterwards. So uh, that also might need to be an amendment, but the thought is like at most you could have like a 30 minute presentation and then we'll have time for questioning afterwards um, just so we don't have like presentation from six to seven type thing. Um, and I'm not attached to that number either. It was just what was discussed in rules when we went over these. Um, I, I like that number. I think it's a good number. I just think that maybe we should add something about question time if if that's your intent. Can I make a motion to have it be minimum 15 minutes per All right, and so I think we can get that reflected here, but it's been, um, sorry, can you repeat your phrasing one more time?
right, so there's been a motion for the amendment as reflected. Is there a second on that? Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to making the amendment that is now completely reflected on screen? Oh. Let's iron out that phrasing real quick before we. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, Senator Charles. Your exact phrasing was with questions included when you just said this. So we can move forward with it. You can withdraw your amendment if you wish. Yeah, we could discuss the amendment. Okay, so you're objecting to your amendment to move into discussion, am I correct? Okay, so there's been an objection to this amendment. We'll move into discussion on this item, starting with Senator Larson. All right, I just, is this clarification enough? Because I feel like it should, with questions included, I'm thinking that it's 30 minutes for the presentation and then not included within that 30 minutes is the question. So I'm just wondering, because I'm thinking in my own brain that the presentation should be no more than 30 minutes and the questioning period should only be within that 30 minute time frame, just so we can have like a concise opening to student government. But I don't know if that's how you feel if the presentation itself should be 30 minutes and then the questioning period doesn't have to be in that 30 minutes. So I just kind of want to hear what other people think. Should it be, should the questions be included in the 30 minutes or should the questioning be outside of that 30 minute period? Senator Mominy. Um, I guess I have a question first. If we were to go over the 30 minutes, we'd be able to do a vote on extending it, right? Okay, um, I think that the wording is fine as it is. If it's 30 minutes and questions included, and then if we feel like we need, still need more time for questions, we could always extend that. And I feel like that's a pretty good way to ensure that we have enough time. But also, you know, be respectful of everybody's time, if that makes sense. All right, and so with that, the floor is open for any further discussion on this amendment. All right, and so seeing no further comments on this amendment, we'll move into a vote. So voting yes to adopt the amendment, voting no to reject it, or of course you may abstain. Unless there are strong feelings for a roll call, UC has been called for. Are there any objections to passing this amendment by waiving it? What? <laughs> okay. Are there any objections to passing this amendment by waiving unanimous consent? Seeing no objections, the amendment shall be made. And so we're now back on the motion as a whole with Senator Mominy. Move to add Senator James to the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? I would like to make a friendly to change the Seeing wording. none, she shall be added. Sorry. <laughs> I would like to make a friendly um, to the First Amendment that we made that says towards the interest to students to make it the two to of, just to be, I don't know the wording for that. But yeah. Speaker Cecil, do you accept? All right. Thank you. So with that, the floor is open for any further discussion on the bill as a whole. Moved and seconded and debate at this time. Any objections to doing so? Seeing none, closing comments, Speaker Cecil? Seeing no cl closing comments, we'll move into a vote. UC has been called for. Are there any objections to passing this motion by way of unanimous consent? Seeing no objection, the motion carries. So with that, we'll move into item 2023-3-021F, annual allocations with Senator Eisma. Hi, everybody. Um, it's one of the biggest financial bills that we do every year. Um, nothing has really changed from previous week other than just some small fi uh, finance committee bylaw stuff. Um, other than that, any questions directed towards me or primarily F.D. Hirsch? So with that, the floor is open for questions or comments. I'm sorry, you said Minshew, uh, Martinez, and Azan. 
Sorry? Yes, I, I wasn't saying that was incorrect. I, I was checking for my own notes there. All right, and so if that's a motion to remove uh, Minshew, Martinez, and Azan from the roll, are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, they shall be removed. So we're now back on the motion as a whole, if there's any discussion. Moved, is there a second on that? Moved and seconded to end debate. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, closing comments, Senator Eisma. Seeing no closing comments and seeing as this is a finance bill, we'll move into a roll call vote. When I read your name, please say yes, no, or you may abstain. Gopa. Rolls. Chenoweth. Everhart. Atikos. Halas. James. James, yes. Trotter. Moisango. Veriger. Irving. Jones. Cecil, Isma, Amro, Mamani, Larson, Persley, and Schneider. So with a vote of 19 to 0 to 0, the motion carries. <laughs> Move to add Senator Martinez. Yes, back to the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be sat. So if that will move on to item 2023-3-023F, big picture annual allocations for FY25 with Senator Eisma. Hi again, everybody. I know, so uh, soon. Uh, another big disc financial bill that we do. Um, we did change some numbers around if Finance Director Marsh could yeah. I just, I want to add to, I went to COA to make sure that it was 100% correct, which, which it is. So basically, the only change that we had to make was just moving around the student activity fee reserve. So that is a state law. It has to be 6% of what our estimated student activity fee is going to be. And so this, again, number is a projection, but for the most part, we believe it's going to be accurate and it's going to be relatively close. And then the most important part of this bill is going to be the left side, and that's where the money is going to be allocated for next fiscal year. There are some requirements when it comes to bylaws, and that's that's shown there on the allocations. But this is it's it's accurate. I made sure it was checked off with COA beforehand as well. So, so with that the floor is open for any discussion on this item. Motion and debate. Is there a second? Moved and seconded to end debate on this item. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing no objections, closing comments, Senator Eisma. Seeing no closing comments and seeing as this is a finance bill, once again we'll move into a roll call vote. Martinez. Gopa. Rolls. Chenoweth. Everhart. Atikos. Halas. Janes. Trotter, yes. Moisango, Veriger, yes. Irving, yes. Jones, yes. Cecil, yes. Isma, yes. Amro, yes. Mamani, yes. Larson, yes. Persley, yes. and Schneider. Yes. So the motion of, or excuse me, is. Tally of 20 to 0 to 0, the motion carries. It's been moved to add Senator Minshew back to the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be added. And we'll then move on to item 2023-3-005Y, adding an international student constituency with Senator Gopa. So uh, this is adding international student con constituencies, the international student constituency to Senate. So basically, there's a lot of international students here, and I don't think they're represented fairly on Senate. And we could add international student seats to Senate to represent their interests because they make up 10% of this university. And 
pay a lot more than us at $14,000 a semester for tuition. Uh, and I think they would offer a diverse perspective to Senate and advocate for the interests of international students. And I would just want them to be in, more included in Senate. I will take any questions. So with that, the floor is open for any discussion, starting with Senator Schneider. Uh, I want to yield my time to Election Commissioner Clayton. Hi, y'all. Uh, Senator Gopa, the enact portion of this bill says that this line be added to the legislative standing rules effective immediately. Do you want, would you, are you going to ask the Senate to ask the election commission to create a special election or are you just gonna have that council like nominate however many seats you're apport they're apportioned. So uh, international students are apportioned to two seats on Senate early and I will would be willing to work with election commission based on how you guys want to run it because it's too late to actually do an international student election right now and with this new session coming up I think I wouldn't think it's appropriate to do, to have this for next year's Term. So this would be for 2026 20, to 2027, this change. We okay. could do it for next year, but it really depends on how Election Commission wants to approach this because you guys are essentially going to run this, and I don't want to like put a burden on you guys so quickly, but I do want this to happen. Like If you guys can do a special election this semester, I, it would be great, but it's really up... Well, I'm pretty sure Gopa would have to ask the entire Senate to ask us to hold a special election, which would take time, but it's also doable. But then there's also the, I'm not going to say easier route, but you could have Gopa nominate or have the International Student Council nominate two people for GOPA to put in front of the Senate to be confirmed to a seat. I think I said that right. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I think, okay, the first row is we go, we ask election, I ask election commission to set a special election and I think that's the route I wanna take. And Cecil wants some time to speak. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so Right now, there are seats that were not elected in the last election. Um, SUV is one of them. Uh, this would have to function the same way as that. We wouldn't, for that, we're not having a special election. Um, so for this year, the most logical step for this body to actually use this would be to have that council nominate individuals the same as others. And then in future elections, we would have it go through election commission because then we would have active senators as as quickly as we could and it would also behave exactly the same as other senate seats yeah that seems more like a solid plan i'd go with that thank you cecil thank you there's been a motion to add senators on back to the roll are there any objections to doing so seeing none he shall be added we'll move over to senator james um so oh, my first question will be: What other constituent councils are not going to be represented if we add, in addition, if we add the international student constituency? Is there any other that kind of represents such a large body of students, like from that perspective? I am not aware of any other large constituencies like the ISC because the ISC is pretty large; three thousand students are represented and. As far as I know, I don't think there are any other constituencies like that. 
was going to try to do this so we don't have feedback. Um, I, the only reason I bring that up is technically it is a small constituency, like in the amount of officers, but technically of who they could theoretically represent. There's like constituencies like first year council, others, so that's the only concern I have that way. Um, my other question would be if we did we have it resolved that question because I was uh, about we're just going to have uh, like do we need to add it into the bill that we're going to be nominating we're going to be requesting IV not IV oh, sorry ISC um, to um, nominate or is that something that they like do we have to put that wording in this bill that's to I'll let's Speaker Cecil talk. Could you repeat the question? Uh, so my question is, how many mics? Um, do, like, if we instate this bill and we go uh, through that route of IS, ISC has to nominate members, do we have to put that language in this bill, or is that just going to be covered by what's in the bylaws that's getting altered? Um, so this is only changing what we consider our constituencies, and mm -hmm. so it would operate the same way as current constituencies, which is already covered in other bylaws. All right, so we don't need to have that covered here? No. All right. Um, thank you. I yield. I just want to those things. Vice Speaker Everhart. I didn't realize it was my turn already. Um, so I know there was a little bit of a concern as far as, um, like, the enacted clause of that it will be effective immediately. Would you... Do we want to keep that, or is that something that, like, should be amended so that way it says, like, effective, like, directly after inauguration taking place on this day? Yeah, Did we could change that to effected on April 9th, 2024. Yeah, I think that would like, work better. So, like, after inauguration takes yeah. place? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then I move to amend the enacted clause by striking out immediately and inserting um, effective post-inauguration on April 9th of 2024. Second. Do you wish to have that part about post-inauguration or simply April 9th? Uh, uh, I want to make sure the amendment's correct before we move forward. Um, um. Gopa, do you have any comments? I don't want it. I post inauguration. Okay, on April 9th, twenty twenty-four. Yeah, how do I? It's not format at all. Twenty twenty-four. Cool. All right, I just want to make sure we have that reflected correctly. Oh, well, I don't know. Okay. Doesn't currently look like we do. Do you guys see it? Yeah, I see it. Oh, is my page just slow? Is that? Yeah, that works. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So I believe it's been uh, moved and seconded to make this amendment as reflected in action, enacted clause. Are there any objections to making this amendment? Seeing none, it shall be made. And so we're now back on the motion as a whole. Do I still have my speaking? You do, yes. Okay. Um, second question. Um, this is more so directed towards. I mean, Gopa, you might know this, um, or F.D. Hirsch. Um, would this change their funding eligibility? And is there anything within the PNC that we would have to change in order for this to work effectively? Either one of you. Just to clarify, so in the PNC it says that if you associate yourself uh, with any constituency council uh, of student government, then that does not qualify you for um, funding, but I guess we're double checking. FD Hirsch, you have anything to add? If you're, if you're unfamiliar with our process, we when we have a club that comes in, or any organization for that matter, we ask them our funding eligibility criteria unless they're exempt from it. But one of those questions, are you associated with any constituency council, uh, residence area, student government, with the exception of UROC? So that's that's what I have towards that, Hannah. I don't know if that answers your question or not. So is there any like specific 
amendments that we would have to make to the PNC in order for this to work effectively with the bylaws is what I'm asking. I don't think so. That's okay. <laughs> really um, I'm going to yield the rest of my time to Speaker Cecil. Um, just on the PNC, we would probably, if this is a constituency, we would probably have to qualify them the same way as UROC is the only difference that I would see if they still wanted funding. Um, but also, um, we also need to look at apportionment on this one just because right now every student has two seats roughly and this would skew it towards their national students just as a reminder. So I, I do have to clarify that. You don't wish to use a sequential speaking be privilege, excuse me. All right, Senator Azan. Um, I feel like this bill, especially like the line 2.1.4C, it's kind of like vague from my perspective. Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier, uh, but unique constituency, I'm not sure what will be the process is going to be the regular elections, and if no one actually run for it, then uh, the council can nominate uh, the candidate. And it doesn't talk about the the number of seats. Um, so we have to, uh, the election commission have to do again the math and figure out, or are we thinking of like putting the numbers as well in the, in the bylaws? Uh, that's the second question. So to be honest, and again, there's like concern about PNC as well, bylaws. So I feel like we should um, table this bill until the rules committee and everyone will figure out everything with the finance and everything, and then we can see it next week. So motion to table this bill. Object. Uh, I would like to see if there was a second on that oh. first, and then we'll, is there a second on that motion? And so seeing no second, I'm sorry, no objection necessary. Okay, uh, let's go over this. Uh, what was your first question, on? Okay, so election commission does the math for us. It's just a simple number. There are 4,105 international students, so if they did the math, if they use their formula, right now it comes down to one to two seats. I was, I'm not sure of the number. But the bill doesn't talk about the number. We do not need to include okay. it, though. Second, what was the second question? Uh, the process. So it's going to be nomination, or it's going to be regular election, and then uh, if no seats being filled, then uh, nomination. As mentioned before, we are going to nominate for af after April 9th. So we're, IC will nominate seats for 2024 to 2025, but after that, we will have an actual election conducted by election commission. My major concern is this is the verbal, so it's better to have something It's written. already in their election code. Probably, yes. My question will be directed to Cecil. Because from this bill, I cannot see it, and this is just verbal. So I want to make sure whatever we are discussing should be on the bill so that, you know, the future senators can also go look back and, you know, make it official instead of just the verbal communication. So our apportionment only goes through election commission. We wouldn't be able to make that on the bill. Um, we would have to reapprove apportionment next year, and we'd have to waive bylaws to confirm them until we have new apportionments that include them. So, if we seat two new members, like on April 10th at the first meeting, we would have to waive the bylaws that, like, set up where our apportionment comes from, essentially, and allow extra senators. Um, so it would be really strange, and it might be good to set this up so it would go active once we have our next apportionment, um, just so we can have like official documentation of how we should structure things. Yeah, I understand all this, but uh, what I'm saying that what uh, Senator Gopa is saying, this is just a verbal communication. Isn't that be good to have some, all this communication? I have no concern on this. This is a great you know, strategy and all these things to you know, work around. My concern is, it would be great if we can write it down on, you know, on the bill as whereas line out, you know, description that, okay, process. After April 9, ISC can nominate X number of members. After this, they're gonna run through elections, 
regular election, if the seats are not being filled, ISC can again nominate it or something along the lines or all this like communication that we're having right now as verbal, the process, it will be great to have something on written on the document and then, you know, in future, if someone want to review it, that will be the process that we decide as a Senate <coughs> instead of having a verbal communication. That's my concern. I, I understand we, that. Yeah. Um, I would encourage you to move for an amendment with specific wording okay. to satisfy what you're concerned with. Okay, so I'm, uh, I need the time, I can write it down. So motion for recess for five minutes. Is there a second on that motion? Seeing no seconds, perhaps you can work on your amendment while we go to other speakers. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Yeah, so we are currently on Senator Azan, Azan's uh, speaking privilege. You could yield, if you wish, to Senator Jaynes or in general. Uh, so motion to add uh, International Student Community, International Student Council. Process will be followed as directed by election code of conduct. I don't know what's the appropriate word for that. Election commissioner? And election commission code, as directed in election commission code. The process of nomination or election should be followed as directed in the election commission code. Can you write that amendment down so we're all on the same page? Just, just if we can take a moment. Motion to amend the, the bill as reflected on the screen. All right, there's been a motion for the amendment reflected at the end of the first whereas clause. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to this amendment? <laughs> Seeing no objections, it shall be made, and so we're now back on the motion as a whole. And so Senator Azan, we're still on your speaking privilege and, unless you wish to yield. Yes. So there's been a motion to table this for one week, moved and seconded to table for one week, so the Election Commission may have an opportunity to review. Are there any objections to this tabling? Election Commission has had a couple weeks to look at this bill, so I don't, uh, have you, uh, did you not? I am so sorry. Oh, I am so sorry to make those claims. So, uh, I would be, I would be open to tabling. So I'll give you an opportunity to withdraw. If you withdraw. Can. All right, so again, it's been moved and seconded to table this for a week, so Election Commission may review it. Are there any objections to tabling for one week? Seeing no objections, this item shall be tabled. With that, we'll move into our new business for this evening, starting with item 2023-3-024F, funding for SWCC publication with Senator Eisma. Hi, everybody. Um, so SWCC, it is the Soil and Water Conservation Club. 
it's a really cool conservation club here on campus. They're asking for money for their, um, I forget what they're asking for off the top of my head, and I can't read it. Um, they're asking for printing. Uh, that's the amount. We're going to look at it in finance next week. Yes or no questions? Floor is open for any questions of intent. Seeing no questions, this, oh, sorry, Senator Jaynes, thank you. All right, and so if that, are there any questions of intent? Seeing none, this item will return next week, and we'll move now into item 2023-3-002-SR, initiating restorative justice at Iowa State with Senator Bominy. Hi, y'all. This is something that I've been working on for about a month now. Um, I really took my time to make sure that it was um, just how I, I felt would best reflect the needs of our student body here. It is doing exactly what it says. I encourage you all to take a look at it and um, ask me a yes or no question if you can. If not, um, please come next week with questions or if you'd like, you can send me an email or talk to me um, after the meeting. I can answer any questions that you have. It's basically just um, acknowledging uh, discomforts and some additional things that we could do to better help improve um, safety here on campus. So if you have any questions, yes or no today, you can ask me. So with that, the floor is open for questions of intent, starting with Senator James. Yes. Yes. Senator Persley. Um, did, you, did you work with campus organizations like uh, Color of Love to help develop this, or will you work with them? Yes. Senator Martinez. All right. Have you considered also adding Ames PD due to students possibly interacting with both? No. All right. Thank you. So with that, the floor is open for any further questions of intent. Seeing none, we'll now move on to item 2023-3-003-SR, thanking Faculty Senate for using OERs with Speaker Cecil. Okay, so OERs are open educational resources. For those of you that don't know, they help to reduce cost on textbooks and many things like that. And before we're done for the term, I'd really like to recognize all of the faculty members that have some form of free textbook in use. Um, I've had a couple classes with them, and they're really nice and really useful. So that's what this bill is. Um, there is a list of all of them that I got from um, I forget their name, but the person responsible for helping with OERs in the library, so. So with that, the floor is open for any questions of intent. Senator Jaynes. Are there individuals or in, an individual uh, plan to write the thank you letters? Uh, right now, the plan is to just. I apologize, that's a question of oh. intent. Yes. Thank you. So with that, are there any further questions of intent? Seeing none, this item will return next week. And so I'm going to go ahead and recuse myself for the first read consideration of item 004SR, yielding the chair to Speaker Cecil. I object to the consideration of the question. It's been a motion to object to the consideration of the question on item 004SR. Is there a second on that motion? And so that, just for a point of information there, that would mean that it's not considered. And so that would require a majority, a two-thirds majority of Senate to vote in favor. Do I need to state my reasoning? If you like, sure. Okay. So when Jeff, when Jeff Clark accepted his position, he understood the expectations and rules outlined for him. Each cabinet member is held personally accountable for fulfilling their duties, and unfortunately, Jeff Clark has not met these expectations. 
Despite regular reminders from President Holliday, Vice President, Vice President Margaret, and former Chief of Staff Dre throughout the semester, Jeff Clark has failed to meet the outlined expectations, including the crucial task of organizing a joint city council meeting. They, dil they diligently checked in on his progress, and although Jeff Clark assured them of progress, progress, it became evident yesterday that little to no advancement had been made. It is not the fault of these three individuals that progress was not achieved as they relied on Jeff Clark's updates. This failure not only reflects poorly on Jeff Clark's performance, but also undermines the effectiveness of the entire student senate and body. President Holliday, Vice President Margaret, and former Chief of Staff Dre are not directly responsible for Jeff Clark's actions. They unfortunately lack control over his failure to fulfill his responsibilities. Given these circumstances, I believe the bill should not be considered. So if that, did I hear a second on the motion to object to the consideration of? Second. Moved and seconded, and unfortunately that, uh, that motion is not debatable, and so we'll move into a vote on that. Voting yes means we will not consider this bill. Voting no means we will continue with the consideration or you may abstain. It requires a two-thirds majority to prevent the consideration of this bill. Yes. My interpretation was attendance, if the speaker and vice speaker agree. In attendance. So with that, we'll move into a placard vote unless there are strong feelings for a roll call vote. And so those in favor of killing the bill, please raise your placard at this time. V voting? This voting yes right now means removing this bill and not considering it. So those who do not wish this bill uh, to see consideration, please raise your placard high so I can get you. Thank you. Here, hold them up for just a moment longer, please. Thank you. Those opposed? Those opposed meaning you do wish to consider the bill. I'm sorry, Senator Zahn, did you vote? Okay. Senator Zahn, I had you voting yes on the motion to kill. Am I clear that you're a no? Okay, please, no's please keep it high. Those abstaining. Thank you. All right, and so with a vote of 12 to 6 to 4, the motion has failed, and so we will consider this bill. And as I mentioned, I will yield the chair to Speaker Cecil for the duration of its consideration. Do you want that physical chair? Yeah, it's all yours. Uh, this bill is on First Street. It was voted for by rules to write this bill um, in a series of two votes due to the fact that the first vote was only focused on the chief of staff. We then included other members because of that. Um, and this is on Fair Street, so I yield to acting speaker to explain the bill. Sorry to hijack the bill. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just take any questions of intent right now. Senator Larson. Is there a second on that motion? Okay. Object. Do you withdraw? Okay, would you like to explain why? We'll move into discussion. So my reasoning for one not for wanting to waive first read is because I feel like we've had a lot of discussion about this before Senate. I feel like next meeting is our last meeting, and I feel like that is not the meeting to be ending on a bad note. I feel like this is the meeting where we could really discuss this 
um, you know, next meeting we might have a lot of bills and I feel like this is just the appropriate time to discuss this um, as there are people here willing to discuss it um, and not wait until the last meeting. So. Uh, Senator Rawls. Well, that is an interesting point, but I think it's important to look at this logically. Like, even though rules did look at it, I feel like it's important to kind of hold a larger meeting while kind of bringing the bill up first. I think we should look at it again, possibly bringing in the accused parties, as we kind of do with rules investigations. I think it's important to survey the accused party and have them kind of explain themselves. Um, do you yield? Okay. Uh, Senator Jones. Yeah. Okay, so um, first, I wasn't at rules last night, so I'm not sure why my name is on this bill. But secondly, um, the bill states it is a responsibility of the chief of staff to maintain communication with all cabinet members and goes on um, to talk about this. However, the communication was maintained. It is not the fault of the president, chief of staff, or vice president that he did not fulfill his duties after telling them that prog progress was being made. Um, I don't know whether that is a nonfeasance or the terms there, but if he said, This debate is on I'm whether or not we are waiving first read. Um, so, I objected I, to waiving first read for this reason. Um, I would struggle to see this as germane to waiving first read. Um, this is a good argument for the bill, um, but not necessarily on the grounds of why we should hear it tonight over next week. Can I move the table the bill indefinitely? when we have completed this process. Thank you. Uh, Senator Mominy. Hi, y'all. Um, Senator Larson, I can, I can, uh, I did overhear people talking about um, the resolution, uh, but I think that we should allow everybody to have the time to maybe talk with other people, get different perspectives. Um, that is why we have a first read, so that way we can get an initial impression and people can have a week to gather their thoughts, um, make opinions. So I think that especially with a bill like this, that we should give those people time to do that. Um, while I understand the sentiment of not wanting to end our last Senate meeting on a bad note, this isn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can just be, I mean, a reality of what it is. And I mostly just think it's important to let people gather their thoughts. I don't think that we should way first read, we even made it a point earlier in the Senate year that we should not be waiving first read unless absolutely necessary, and I don't see this as a case of it being absolutely necessary. I think it would be more beneficial to allow people to discuss this over to the next week. So, I yield. Uh, Senator Jaynes. Um, just to address um, Senator Roll's point, uh, I'm going to point the question to Acting Chair Cecil, is that the term? Sorry. Um, when this bill was initially run, uh, when the voting was done with just Stacia, uh, staff, Chief of Staff's name on it, uh, was the Chief of Staff invited to that meeting? Uh, just because if that's the reason we want to delay it, was that historically happening beforehand? So. Historically, the accused individual would come to a meeting um, after the bill was introduced on first read. However, this bill just was a product of the meeting and was not expected, so no. There hasn't been any discussion with any one mentioned in the bill. So to clarify though, historically, if this bill was following general, it would be norm that they wouldn't, that the uh, parties listed in the bill wouldn't win until after first read to communicate to rules. Yes. Okay, 
got it. Um, and then, sorry, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Um, would there be any influence, um, uh, continuing the question to you, um, of doing this later versus earlier on the effectiveness of the bill if it gets passed in Senate or if it doesn't get passed in Senate? Probably not. Got it. Thank you. I yield. Senator Larson. Okay, if we were to waive first read today, or if we were not to do it and have this next week, um, would there be able to be provided evidence of made communications? Like if, if we were to waive it, would there not? And then if we waited next week, would that be something that would have to have time to be presented to us that there was actually communication made? Because I know Senator Jones said that there has been communication made. Um, is that something that we're going to be able to see? if we waited until next week? Um, I guess, I mean, since I'm technically the author right now, uh, that would be directed towards me. Um, so I would say yes, just because then we would have the minutes from our rules meeting um, that anybody would be able to view, um, as well as, um, Right. Um, also, if we were to send, um, if this like goes through rules on second read, then we'd be able to send it favorably, unfavorably, um, and actually like unpack the entirety of the bill. Um, I know there were a couple of us who were not at rules last night. Um, I was not, and I honestly wish I would have been for this. Um, but yeah, I guess it makes more sense to keep it on first read for now just because then we'd be able to actually address the bill as a whole. Okay. Um, Senator Gopa. Okay, let's get straight to the facts. Did Jeff Clark not fulfill his duties? Yes. Uh, that is to... Point of order, would that be equivalent to a waiting first read? Oh, yeah, that's... That's a good, uh, that's probably. Would that be germane? Uh, yeah, I would say that's not germane. Okay. And if you have no further, I'll move on to Senator Azan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, um, Acting Chair Cecil. I think it's important to have, uh, you know, first read only and don't wait the first read. Just because we can have a discussion internally as well because I can see that uh, two of the members from the rules committee who are author were not present in the rules committee. So it's important to have the discussion and hear both the parties and then it will not change the outcome or anything. It just to have like all the perspective and you know, if you guys can figure out things internally, that will be great. Um, and instead of like putting something official. So I think it's, it's okay to just you know uh, read this as first read and see this uh, document next week. Uh, Senator Trotter. I would just like to, to kind of cut to what seems to be the crux of the issue and that would decide whether we need to do first read or not. Of, it seems like no one is really debating the guilt of Jeffrey Clark specifically. And so any bill with just Jeffrey Clark on it could probably be passed today and no, no amount of inf evidence or information is going to be passed or found that's going to exonerate him or if any, or, and further solidifying his guilt wouldn't be particularly useful. The main debate seems to be on putting these other three people on there, one of which has already resigned, which I have my own opinions about but isn't germane. So it seems to me that the crux of the debate here on whether we raise first re read and whether we do the bill at all is whether we have these other three people. So I would propose that we do, in, that we get rid of this all or nothing approach and we pass this bill, we amend it, and we, we waive first read on this bill to just judge Jeffrey Clark individually, and then we pass, we write a second bill next um, week, we face would, next week. I would say this is not germane to whether or not we should pass the bill. What I'm proposing is we split the bill. Amendments. Is we split the bill into two separate parts and we pass one, and we deal with them separately. Senator Mominy. 
um, to address that, um, like it has been said before, if if we were to keep it how it's supposed to be with this being on first read, it would be able to go to rules again. Rules would be able to hear all parties involved if they choose to come. And we would be able to decide if we want to make a motion to amend it um, at the next Senate meeting. So I don't see there being a reason to waive first read and make a whole bunch of amendments now uh, when we could allow it to be on first read, allow people to gather their thoughts, gather their opinions, allow the involved parties to come to rules, state their case, and just do things how they're supposed to be done. So with that, I yield. Senator Jenks. Um, also to build onto that, the reason why um, I'm also on the side of not waiving first read is um, due to, sorry, I'm taking a look, due to how like even if we went through that hypothetical of making it where we would just be um, addressing our ex officio, I feel like they are also, I understand where we're coming from, but I think they are also um, privileged to do a process of going through rules committee and talking to them. So I understand where you're coming from, but um, I think that because historically, um, if as I confirmed with uh, acting chair Cecil, I'm getting there guys, um, that I think we shouldn't because no matter how we change it, I think any names on here should get the right and the privilege to be able to talk to, the, to, talk to rules if that's how historically it's done. Um, and I yield. Senator Larson. Technically, no. You if you use two. Okay. Senator Trotter yields his time to Senator Larson. Okay. In relation to um, waiving first read, so. He, he waived his privilege. Senator Trotter yielded his time. Yeah. Um, so the problem with this is that, uh, from what it sounds like, is that there was incomplete communication or not enough communication with uh, Liaison Clark. So do we know if he will even be attending the meetings next week to be able to yeah, are we able to get a hold of him is, is what I is what I'm wanting to know. Can we get a hold of him? Can we get a hold of him by next week? Like are we cuz from from what it sounds like the reason that he failed to do his duty is because there was failed communication like yeah, has he has he been communicating with us? Are we able to get a hold of him? Or is moving is not waiting for it and having it next week going to be pointless if he doesn't come to any of the meetings and doesn't come to Senate next week? So we could have just seen it this week if he's not going to be there. And do you know if we're able to get a hold of him? Um, I don't know. I mean, it genuinely depends on if he sees that this bill is up on the floor. Um, and we're able to notify him and say, hey, you know, you've been. Is it on this bill that rules committee is supposed to be talked about, or is that something that rules are actually supposed to recommend to the rules committee through either? It's an internal rules process. So do you care she didn't have? During an investigation in rules, you reach out to the parties involved. Um, typically when it's a century bill, you bring it to Senate and it's on First Street. And then in the week following, they have the opportunity to come um, to discuss their portion. So. Um, so I just, I want to know if like, the president or vice president have been in contact, like have, have you been able to reach liaison Clark? I just want like a yes or no, like have you been able to, to reach him recently? It is because I want to know if he's going to be at the meetings next week. So if we should waive first read or not to have it this to have it this week. So just have, has has anybody been able to get in contact with him recently? Yeah, is that directed towards me? 
it's whoever, which one of you can answer it more effectively. So the question was go. simply, have we been able to reach ex officio Clark? Yes. Uh, I was in contact with him yesterday and today. I was told that the reason he's not here tonight is because he was sick. That is what I was given. Uh, beyond that, I can't speak to whether he would be in attendance next week or not. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Object. Are we off waiving first read? No, this is would be calling the question on waiving first read. A yes okay. would waive first read, and yep. no would not. Okay. All right, so we'll move into a placard vote. All those in favor of waiving first read, raise your placards. All those opposed? Uh, all those abstaining? All right. Uh, so with a vote of 1 to 20 to 1, uh, we will not be waiving first read. So. I motion to table this bill indefinitely on the basis that um, Jeff Clark not fulfilling his duties can be taken care of internally. Um, by the vice president and president, and rules can open an internal investigation if there is need to do so. I do not think that this needs to be ran on the Senate floor. Um, point of information, an internal rules investigation comes to the Senate floor. I think this can be handled internally through the cabinet, through president, vice president. I don't think it needs to be ran on the, on the, on the um, floor. This, this is germane as they're motioning to table indefinitely and explaining the reasoning. Um, all right, so we're back on the motion of tabling it indefinitely as a whole. Now there is. Okay, with objections, we will move into discussing whether or not to table this indefinitely. Could you repeat that? Uh, we're not moving into a vote, we're discussing. Okay, I've been corrected. There's not discussion on the motion to table, so we will be having a placard vote. All those in favor of tabling the bill indefinitely, raise your placards. All those opposed to tabling the bill indefinitely. And all those abstaining. All right, with a vote of uh, with a vote of three to fourteen to four, this bill will not be tabled, and we'll come back next week. The Senator or Acting Speaker Everhart. Okay, we are back on to questions of intent for this bill. These are yes or no questions, and we cannot make amendments on first read. Senator Jaynes. Um, I know I already asked this question, but I want to say it in front of everyone else. Are there other options other than, um, God, I'm sorry, I cannot find it. What's the word again, censor? Censor uh, for s Senate to, show their discontent with what's happened. Would you like me to reword the question? That's a loaded question. Oh. Um, yes, there are other methods to address this. Thank you. Senator Persley. 
Googling it yesterday. Do you think a censure will be effective in getting the point across? Maybe. Yes. Senator Gopa. I'd like to give my statement to the researcher. Um, were those other methods considered in the writing of this bill? Point of information, this is the lowest method. This is the least impactful. So no, because this is the least impactful. Got it, thank you. Um, this is on first read, so seeing no more questions of intent, we will move on, and I will yield the chair back to Vice President Margaret. All right, and so if that, we'll see that bill again next week, and we'll move now into item 2023-3-008Y, establishment of a special committee for accountability and transparency within the student government with Senator Razan. Hello, guys. Okay, it's me. Uh, the motivation of this bill, um, again, we have in past couple of tough uh, Senate meetings, even in last semester, and some of the senators had to leave the Senate instead of, you know, just because of the internal conflict or, you know, their point of view. So the motivation, and I read through the bylaws, and the bylaws uh, doesn't talk about, you know, internal way of, like, you know, resolving conflict or maybe having a discussion or mediated discussion. So that's why I thought to have uh, an order to... Uh, amend the bylaws and add uh, a special committee. And this committee will only be formed if someone is reporting any concern, just to you know, have a discussion internally. And the, the committee structure is basically you know, distributing the whole power from executive to rules committee as well. You know? So, and two members from executive, members from rules, which are the senators, and two members from Supreme Court. Um, and advisor as well. They can hear both the parties, you know, separately. And then after hearing both the parties, come up with a report and suggestions or, you know, recommendations. Uh, and that's how we can resolve the conflict instead of like senators leaving the Senate or, you know, uh, that's not the, the best way of going about. So that was the motivation. And it's on first read, so I'm open for question. So I'm so sorry. Um, point of information, this is just for um, next week if anybody um, has questions. It is my understanding that 1.5 does address the concerns in this bill. So that's just a point of information for people to reference next week. All right, and so with that, the floor is open for questions of intent, starting with Senator Gopa. Is this not what rules or the Supreme Court already does? Mm. Senator James. Um, is there a reason why you didn't decide to add this function to a, a pre-existing committee? Yeah, is there a reason? Yes or no? Can you repeat your question? So basically I'm asking yes or no, like, did you consider adding these, uh, like the feet that the best solution, or did you just decide to um, add a new committee? So yes would say um, you did consider adding these functions to other committees, and no would be no. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Senator Larson. Have you considered having backups if there is if the problem is related in the rules committee and or a backup if there is a problem with the president and vice president? So like the rules or the president and vice president is the reason that the committee 
has to meet? Is there going to be a backup for those options? Point of information, the bill does talk about that. Okay, sorry. In case if there's a conflict. Okay. And the accu accused party is president, let's say, or vice president, they will be replaced by someone else. Okay, okay. sorry, I haven't read it. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm sorry, did you answer the... That's point of information. Yes, but if you wish, you still have the opportunity to answer the yes. question of the time. Yes. Senator Martinez. Does the committee that this bill would establish, uh, is, it, is this committee giving, given new authority that uh, rules or the Supreme Court does not already have? Yes. Okay. Senator Mamani. Seeing as this does fall within the bylaws, um, if you think that it is not adequate, the wording in, the, in our bylaws, would you be opposed to just adding this to Section 1.5 instead of creating a new constituency council? Yes. You would be opposed? I would be fine to add that in that bylaws. Okay. Senator Jones. Um. So, any new committee, the forming of a new committee would have to go through rules. Have you had this conversation with speaker or vice speaker about sending a new committee through rules? Uh, I did ask speaker Cecil to actually have discussion on rules. So I don't know. Yes. So with that, the floor is open for any further questions of intent. Seeing none, we'll now move on to first read of item 2023-3-009Y, adding the campus safety walk as the responsibility of the Director of Student Services of Student Government in the bylaws with Senator Azan. Again, uh, campus safety is very important, um, and I have seen um, that it's not in the bylaws as responsibility, and given that campus safety is very important, instead of like, you know, the, uh, the director picking and choosing whether they want to do that project or not. I think it's important to have this as a responsibility and bylaws to make it mandatory that we should have a campus safety walk by week, by annually. So yeah, open for any question. So with that, the floor is open for questions of intent. Yes? Yes. Is that directed at someone specific? Dr. Monroe. Student initiatives. No. So Senator Jones, did you have another question of intent? So it's just a comment, but they've done this for years and they already currently do this. Um, so I don't really see the point of this, that's all. Senator Mominy. Sorry if this has already kind of been asked, but Azan, did you take measures to communicate with the director before writing this bill? Yes. So with that, are there any further questions of intent on this bill? Oh, yes. Senator James? Uh, they have a conversation with the director moving forward. Yes. So with that, are there any further questions of intent? Seeing none, we'll move on to item 23-3-025F, funding a universal changing with Acting Vice Speaker Eisma. So I teleported from the last time to where I was. Um, universal changing stations that would help support old children and adults that would uh, need it. It's kind of, it's honestly pretty straightforward. Um, Director Spahn spoke with Brad and to those relevant um, to about anything that would the MU would need to pay for outside of it, um, the MU is paying for the actual installation and any other changes not listed on the bill. 
they're taking care of that. Any other yes or no questions? So with that, the floor is open, starting with Senator Jones. If you, all right, with that, are there any questions? Senator Jaynes. Did you get the estimate of the $4,125 from the MU? Yes. Thank you. With that, are there any further questions? Seeing none, we'll then move into item 2023-3-026F, funding allocation for the Sloss House Resource Room for enhancing student well-being with Senator Azan. Uh, so how many of you know the Sloss House, by the way? By the You can. can you see? Okay, so the Sloss House is basically a satellite kind of like thing, an expansion of uh, the services provided by SHOP, but it's a little bit different than SHOP because it ha does have things that are not currently in SHOP, like the essential items for uh, gender, uh, gender care items um, and parenting supplies and all these things. Um, I did reach out to, you know, uh, Sloss House Resource Team and they requested $5,000 to uh, support. Uh, currently, this is basically based on just a donation. Uh, there's no major source, uh, you know, institutionally to support this, so yeah. Any questions? So with that, the floor is open, starting with Senator Mamani. Will we have some type of an itemized list or any more specific items that the 5,000 would be going towards? No. Senator Jones. Um, I have a couple questions. Number one, do we already give money to the Sloss House? I will bag this to um, Dr. Harsh because I don't know. They reach, uh, I reached out to them and they were like, no, we need money. So if I'm correct, Senator Zahn is yielding over to F.E. Yeah. Hirsch to answer that yes or no yes. question. Yeah, just to be clear, we do give sorry, funds. Finance Director Hirsch, I'm sorry, it has to be a yes or no. Oh, do you give funding to the Sloss House? Sorry. No, not directly. We give, I, we, do, get, we give money to shop, and we give them money for hygiene products, just to be clear. So we do yeah. give them funding for hygiene products along with food. Oh, is it still my speaking privilege? Uh, technically, no, because unfortunately, you only get one question of intent. So if someone else wished to yield you speaking privilege, oh. Senator Schneider, was that your point of order? Technically, no. So, Senator Schneider, if you're yielding to Senator Jones. So, from my understanding, you reached out to the Sloss House rather than the Sloss House reaching out to us about this, um, saying that they need funding. So, did you personally reach out to the Sloss House? No. Okay, that's weird because you just said you did. That was like miscommunication, so. All right, Senator James. My question is, was Sloss House unwilling to give us an itemized list of what that money would go to? Yes. So with that, are there any further questions of intent on this bill? Senator Martinez. Did you ask Sloss House for an itemized list? Yes. Senator Gopa. Uh, does Sloss House primarily serve the student body? Yes. So with that, are there any further questions? Seeing no further questions of intent, we'll move into our last item of business for this evening, item 2023-3-005SR, promoting inclusivity and accommodation of religious minority holidays within the academic calendar at Iowa State University with Senator Azan. Uh, so this bill, basically, it's kind of like a lengthy bill, so I will encourage all the senators to read it uh, uh, before coming to the next meeting. Uh, so this bill talks about and acknowledge uh, the, the religious minority groups have holidays, religious holidays, 
and currently most of the instructors don't accommodate all of the holidays or at least the important one. Um, I know like students having exams or tests on the day. For example, for Muslim, it's Eid. For, you know, Jewish, they have different holidays. Hindu has Diwali and other stuff. So it's basically just asking the faculty senate to consider similar resolution in their platform to you know talk about and just as a as a sort of awareness uh, that if the senate faculty senate can approve this that will be great and again sharing this uh, to university administration to consider uh, religious holidays in their calendar and so that you know most of the instructors are aware of it and they can get the uh, the accommodation or maybe a different time slot for exams or tests. Even for grad students, uh, they don't uh, get the holiday. Uh, as a research assistant, they still have to come on the, in the lab, uh, depending on the project. And I know of one student having prelim on the day of Eid, which is crazy. But um, so yeah, any questions? So with that, the floor is open, starting with Senator Mamani. Seeing as we won't really we can't enact tangible change. We can only pass this resolution. Have you already reached out to faculty senate or um, facilitators of our university calendar about this? Yes. Senator Jones. So, okay, so this isn't necessarily a question, more of a comment, but no religion has accommodations here. Technically, no. So okay. if, you're, if you're able to I'll address it as a question, that would okay. be Okay. Since no religion gets accommodations at this university, how do you plan to make that for every religion rather than the ones you have just stated here? And I do apologize. It has to be a yes or no question. Okay. Sorry. Let's, let's do that. It's do you plan to do that rather than the ones just stated here? Since no religion at this university has specific accommodations. I'm still confused about, like, can you repeat the question? Yeah, since no religion at the university has specific accommodations, do you plan to expand it since you only have certain ones stated here? Yes. Senator James. Um, kind of picking back in off uh, competition uh, question asked two times were the parties that you talked to about this receptive to this resolution no thank you Senator Larson okay I might have misunderstood what Senator Jones was saying but I believe on all of our syllabuses in class, there is a religious accommodation section. And I was just wondering if you had looked at that. And then, at least in all my classes, there's a section where it says, you or your instructor may seek assistance from the dean of students office or the office of equal opportunity to make a religious accommodation request for classes. So is this something that you have you have reached out to both of those offices and looked into how they do their religious accommodation and see if that is something they'd be willing to do. Let me, let me phrase that down. Have you looked at the religious accommodations and the Dean of Students Office, as well as the Office of Equal Opportunity when creating this bill? Have you reached out to those? You said Office of Equal Opportunity and the other, what's the, the other one? The Dean of Students Office as well as the Office of Equal Opportunity. I reach out to one, not the second, so I don't know. If you can rephrase the question, that will be good. <laughs> All right, and so with that, are there any further questions of intent on this bill? Seeing none, it will return next week. Oh, Sarah Minshew? Very well. So for my last uh, question of intent, as a resolution, this won't solve anything. Do you recognize that? No. What do you mean by will not solve anything? Senator James, were you hoping for another question? All right, it's been moved uh, to remove Senators Go. 
It's, there's been a motion to remove Senator Martinez from the roll. Are there any objections to doing so? Seeing none, he shall be removed. All right, and so with that, are there any further questions of intent? Seeing none, this item will return next week. So we've now completed our business for the evening, and the floor is open for any general closing announcements at this time. Senator Gopa. Happy LAS week, everyone. Make sure to check out all the events. LAS is definitely the best college out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, suck it, everyone else. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where can you find these events? You can find it on the Instagram or the LAS Week website. Also, s make sure to check out those texts. Uh, other things. Uh, what is it? Yeah, that's it. What, I Senator Ticos. All right, everyone. So I've got like two announcements. So I'll probably like just repeat myself from a few uh, meetings ago. So uh, uh, this engineering semi-formal that we are very excited of, uh, that's that's approaching. It's on uh, the April the 5th from 5 to 10 p.m. We will have a, a keynote speaker from the faculty. Uh, all engineer, College of Engineering students are invited. And also uh, we have this donuts with the dean, uh, which we uh, conducted last semester. That's on April the 17th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m and uh, possibly on uh, student innovation uh, center. With that, I yield. Senator Jaynes. Um, I just wanted to say um, we've had, we have a couple bills on first read that I believe um, the Senate wants to have further communications. I just want to say that please feel free and empowered to have those communications. But remember to have them in a professional way. I understand emotions could get charged with conversations, but please have them. And also understand there might be, I won't say an air of confidentiality, but there might be a time and a place to share it with other senators if you do have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone. Senator Mominy. I am just going to share once again that the Multicultural Town Hall is less than a week away. It is April 2nd, 6 to 8, in Carver 101. Please come. Please tell your friends. There's food. It's free. There's also some pretty cool sweatshirts. So you should come. That's all. I yield. Senator Larson. Okay, on a more happy note, I want to thank all of you for voting the flag poll, the flag improvement project through. Um, that is something I've been wanting to do forever. Jennifer knows that I brought it up to Wendy to her face, and I'm just so excited that we actually have been able to do it. And if you're going to be a senator next year, I'd love to chat with you because I feel like it'd be a really cool opportunity for us to do a ceremony once it gets completed with our OTC um, just to do like a little unveiling and I will not be here since I'm graduating so if you would be interested in doing that and you'll be a senator next year let me know and I'll kind of give you some contact information of some people that from ROTC that uh, you can get in contact with but again thank you guys so much it's really awesome we were able to do that so with that the floor is open for any further closing announcements seeing none and with no closing announcements of my own I yield to acting vice speaker Isma. nothing to say it's fun to be up here and to see you all um, so just completely unrelated to most things right now um, after rules last night a group of us uh, found out that there's a lot of random exotic animals and the state of Iowa allows exotic animals as long as they're an assistive animal so you know as a group maybe we should look at you know like therapy bears or something <laughs> Because um, you can get three black bears for like $18,000. <laughs> and, and we could get a student government license to have some therapy black bear cubs. I mean, that seems like a pretty unique experience for students. Just, anyways, that's my only announcement. I meant to share it in the rules update. But with that, move to adjourn. Go Cyclones. We are adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>